So we're back on the road and we're doing another vlog for the guides and today I have brought you to a place of mystery and history. It's called Martin Glen in Scotland. A beautiful place, one of my favourite parts of Scotland and also quite a, a quiet area, a bit overlooked. It's really an interesting area because you can go a mile in any direction from where I'm stood and you will find 5,000 years worth of history. You'll find prehistoric uh, rock art and stone carvings, you'll find Neolithic burial sites, you'll find Bronze Age burial sites, you'll find Iron Age hill forts. There's just so much going on here, uh, it's fascinating and, and people tend to think if they're interested in archaeology, Orkney is the place that they should head to. But actually, for a sheer concentration of archaeological sites, no place in Scotland has got a higher concentration than Kilmartin Glen. So let me just show you some of the highlights because there's, there's far too many places here for me to show you them all. So I'm just going to cherry pick a few good examples. The cairn you see behind me is Netherlage South Cairn and it's the oldest of the five burial cairns that form the Linear Cemetery in Kilmartin Glen. Now the Linear Cemetery is a line of, as I said, five cairns which stretches over a distance of two kilometres along an axis that runs through the valley of Kilmartin Glen. This particular cairn was extended about 1,000 years after it was originally built and there are some additional burial cysts that you see on the outside of it. What they would have done would be bury people in here and they would use it several times. So when somebody died, uh, the bones that were already in the cairn would be stacked up very neatly to make space for the new body. Very pragmatic people in Kilmartin Glen. This is Temple Wood and it's arguably the most magical site that you have in Kilmartin Glen. Made magical by its lovely woodland setting. I'll just pan round and you can appreciate that. The woodland setting is actually a bit of an add-on. Um, the landlord in the 1800s was so fascinated by this site and the, the archaeology of it and he thought it would be enhanced by planting of trees so he planted all these trees in the early 1800s. And it does make the site extra special. Um, somehow the trees just give it that slightly more mystical quality. And I think this would be a very good setting for, for Donna Craig if you ever wanted to do a remake of Outlander. Um, it's got the atmosphere, you've got a stone circle and the interesting thing here is the stones were developed over many, many thousands of years in different phases. Apparently this site up here, this is the northern circle, and it started off as, as a timber stone circle, um, a bit cheapskate if you ask me. They did away with the timber and then we moved on to this much bigger cairn, and originally we had 22 standing stones here. They're all relatively small standing stones, only a metre or so high, but there were 22 of them. There's now 13 left. And then the standing stones, they added to that the, the cobbles that you see round about, and then there's a small burial cairn in the middle of it. But they have never actually found any human remains here, apart from one child's tooth. That's the only human remain that was ever found in excavations that took place here. It's not part of the linear cemetery that I was mentioning earlier with Netherlage cairn. Um, it's offset from the line of Netherlage. Of, of, it's offset from the line of the linear cemetery. But archaeologists think that this was possibly the, the main ritual site that would happen here. So maybe this is where the ceremonies took place for the uh, passing on to the next world. And then the bodies were moved from here to one of the cairns built in the linear cemetery. Of course we'll never know, but um, we can only speculate. But it's a lovely site. I'll stop talking now and I'll just pan the camera around and let you appreciate what we've got here. Logan meditating in the middle. Oh, big smile. Just step further and further back to give you a full appreciation of this plane. Just visible. 
on the ground there we have the North Cairn and back to Logan sunbathing in the South Cairn. Okay, it is a bit windy but I'm going to try and take you now and show you some of the other sites and hopefully the audio quality won't be too bad. This is Netherlargy Standing Stones, one of the most interesting sites in Comartin Glen and the thing that makes it really interesting is the fact that it's a Neolithic Lunar Observatory. The stones are arranged in uh, an elongated X shape and they coincide, the alignment, if you stand at the centre stone and look at the stones to the northwest, that coincides with the northern standstill of the moon. And if you stand at the centre stone and look to the southeast, it coincides with the southern standstill of the moon. But when I say the standstill, that's the point, the southernmost point that the moon sets on the horizon uh, here, and the northernmost point on the horizon that the moon sets. Now that only happens every 19 years, so if you think about that, people in this period of time, we're talking um, 4,000, 5,000 years ago, uh, people at that time maybe only had a lifespan of 40 to 50 years. So at most they would only have seen this lunar occurrence once, maybe twice in their lifetime at the very most. So it's an incredible feat of um, mathematics, it's an incredible feat of historical recording and astronomy for even a modern generation to, to do that and then to align these stones as accurately as they have done um, makes it really quite fascinating and obviously we've got a very advanced culture going on here in Colmartin Glen um, it all adds to the mystery of this place so I've already shown you uh, Netherlargy Standing Stones, Netherlargy South Cairn and uh, Temple Wood and those three sites are all quite close together and about just a little over a mile in the direction over my shoulder today I'm going to take you to a different site which is very easily accessed from the A816 road between Loch Gilpet and Oban but it tends to get overlooked um, there's just as many, there's a, there's a burial cairn which I'll show you in a moment we've got these standing stones here, the Ballymenach standing stones uh, Dunnach Craig, there's a uh, a, a burial cyst, an unusual one, because lots of people were buried in it and there's also some rock art near here, so there's lots of things, it's worth stopping here but most folk just drive past it, it's a smaller car park and Templewood and the standing stones at Netherlargy get more attention but these are interesting stones, the only problem being that you have to get to them by walking through a field which quite often has cows in it and I've only just realised but I've been photobombed by these three young bullock chap. Oh, lovely performance. Um, so if you do come to the Ballybenich Standing Stones, it's not a good idea to film at the same time as you're walking because you have to be quite careful. That's just why I'm not looking in the camera. There's things on the ground that you have to try and dodge. But um, the ground's quite wet with the grass, but it's dry enough. Um, it's, not, it's not boggy. But then you find the Standing Stones which Logan is demonstrating the height of. How high do you reckon that is? I will step to show you how high it is. You're on a step. Well, if I'm six foot, this standing stone is at least eight foot tall. And then we've got one here, which must be, I would guess, easily 10 foot tall, and then maybe 12 foot tall. They're very nicely stepped. Sorry, I'm gonna scan back. So, at the end, I would say this one's about 12 foot tall, 10 foot tall, 8 foot tall, and then, bah, we'll give it 7 foot, we'll be generous. And then behind us, there's two more, which are probably around about the 8 foot tall high as well. And they neatly line up. Let me just come round and show you. So they make a very neat, very neat, look at that, very neat alignment, very little deviation in the stones at all, 
Um, the ones at the end have maybe leaned over a bit with age. Um, so there must be some sort of east-west orientation. Maybe it, this is related more to the travel of the sun um, than it is, whereas at nether Largy standing stones, it's all about the orbit of the moon. I would imagine this is more to do, as I say, with sunrise and sunset positions. It does make the position of the two over there a bit curious. But, uh, yeah, so Ballymere Standing Stones, um, well worth a visit. Very close to the more famous Templewood Netherlargy Stones and easy access, you just have to mind where you put your feet. So this is Dunkraigig Cairn, Burial Cairn, which is about a mile away from Kilmartin Glen, the, the sites of Templewood and Netherlargy South Cairn that I showed you earlier. Um, it's very close to the A816, which is just over there, but it gets missed by a lot of passing traffic. It's not as well signposted, not as popular. It's raining now, so I'm going to move quickly because the camera's going to get dirty. The, uh, the thing that makes this one interesting is when they excavated it in the mid-1800s, they found uh, eight bodies, the remains of eight bodies here, which is a far higher concentration of human remains than they find in other sites. Uh, it was described though, and this sounds really horrendous, but when they uncovered the bodies, the skeletons were described as having the consistency of butter. Um, now the idea of human bones turning as putrid as that is really quite repulsive, but after 4,000 years, I dare say it's to be expected. I forgot to mention that. This, this site's slightly younger than the Netherlargy South Cairn. It's, Netherlargy South Cairn's about 5,000 years ago. This one's about 4,000 years ago. So it's, it's a new build by um, Scottish uh, burial cyst standards and it's getting wet now so I'm going to move on. So this is Baluar Craig uh, Rock and it's just a short distance, 200 metres or so from the burial cyst I was showing you earlier where there were the eight bodies that had turned into the consistency of butter. Um, the thing that makes this interesting is it's got these little ring and cup marks in it and these are very distinctive for this region and also in, in certain parts of Ireland as well. They date from about 5,000 years ago and they're a complete mystery. There's all sorts of theories about what they might be for. Some people think it maybe is a way of charting lunar eclipses. Um, people think they might be used as indication markers for travellers. It's a complete mystery. Um, I personally think that they could be used as egg cup holders for having a picnic, or I think the more likely theory, and the one I like, is that they are some kind of coded system for a family tree. Because of course these things could have been painted in with all sorts of different colours. We just see them in, in relief, um, and we've no idea what they're for. So you can make up any theory you like, and you could be correct, or you could be wrong, but no one's going to tell you uh, tell you that you've, you've made a mistake because we just have no ideas. Right, it's getting wet and I'm going to go now because I don't want to get any wetter. Do we want to get any wetter, Logan? Um, no, we don't want to get any wetter, so we're going to end this video now and we're going to get back in the car and drive home. See you later.